Okay. So I'll make this presentation on the County Climate Change Fund mechanism that has been piloted and being rolled out in Kenya for the benefit uh, of all the participants, mostly those who are from outside, just to say that uh, we are organized in terms of uh, the national level and then the next level is the county level. In Kenya, we have a total of 47 counties. Below the counties, we have the sub-counties and then the ward level, which is our lowest planning unit. In terms of uh, uh, the County Climate Change Fund mechanism, I just want to say that this is uh, a mechanism designed uh, to channel uh, climate finance to the lowest level uh, to finance priority climate change interventions. Um, as you can see from the uh, diagram on the left, uh, it's designed to attract funding from both public and private sources, national, international, and also local sources, from example, the budgets. And uh, in terms of uh, planning how to use and make a decision on, on the use, we have the ward level committees at the lower level, uh, which uh, have a role of mobilizing the communities to identify and prioritize the interventions. They work together with the county level committees, which I'll come to shortly, uh, to see if they meet the pre-agreed criteria in terms of identifying what to invest in. And uh, as we've, uh, uh, the way we've employ, impl employed or uh, implemented this is that majority of the funding is dedicated to the lower level. That's the ward where we have 70% of the total kitty, 20% catering for things like policy and the county level and restricting expenditure on administrative overheads. In terms of how the mechanism looks like or what consists of, it consists of uh, four components, four interrelated components that work to reinforce each other. I'll just explain this briefly. So the first component is a county fund, which is uh, uh, established through a county legislation um, used to finance priority climate change activities. As I've said, it's designed to attract funding from the public, that's through the budgeting process, private sector, donors, etc. etc. And uh, the key thing for us here is that county governments, which is our uh, subnational governments, also allocate a percent of their development budget each year to the kitty. Uh, typically, they have been allocating a minimum of 2%, 1 to 2%. Some are now doing three, which is great. And this money is used based on the pre agreed criteria to finance those interventions. Related to the committees, is the, to the fund, is the committees. We have committees at the lower level, which are actually the pillar of this mechanism at the ward level, the lowest planning unit, uh, that work uh, with communities uh, to identify what their challenges are, climate related challenges, uh, prioritize based on the valuable budget, which they know in advance um, uh, to invest in a particular year, and then share these or engage these with the county level committee that support them technically to ensure they meet the criteria and uh, finance those investments. The key thing for these mechanisms is that the relationship between the lower level and the higher level at the county level is more facilitating rather than vetoing what's coming from the lower level. The third component being a climate change initiative is about the focus on climate information services and other tools that help us integrate both community and other forms of knowledge. Um, we have uh, our agencies, uh, the, the meteorological department, supporting the process of coming up with a, a strategy to provide um, tailored climate information to users at that lower level, so that this informs uh, the assessments that communities carry out, the prioritization, the design and location of investments. So this is to ensure that they deal with both current and also the future risk that uh, people are able to pick up. Um, I don't know why it's jumped. Sorry, something happened. Uh, it just jumped to the next slide. I don't know why. The, the other bit is about ensuring that we also uh, track what we are doing. In terms of um, um, where it started, uh, way back in 2010, under our then Ministry of Northern Kenya, which felt, and other lands, which felt that those areas were actually being impacted and the feeling was that they could not wait any longer. 
therefore the idea was to come up with something that could be tried and then uh, uh, integrated in the government planning system. So the work started way back in 2010 uh, with participation of a number of agencies, the national and local ones. Uh, later, apart from working in the initial county of Isiolo, we later, after stock taking, moved to additional four counties with support of a number of development partners. But the key thing for us at that particular juncture was the fact that um, the was the fact that the the national uh, adaptation plan actually picked this up as a good lesson that was worth replicating. Uh, fast forward, uh, the fact that in our uh, new planning cycles, counties now legislated to ensure that this is properly institutionalized. We had rounds of investment, further rounds of investments, and also we took some time to learn from our mistakes and see how best this can be taken forward, especially in our national climate change action planning processes that's going on. And of course, uh, to date, where we have uh, Victor, also... sorry, sorry to interrupt, but um, I was hoping that you could be able to put the slides back in presentation mode. Yeah, kindly. I can do that. Thank you. Yeah, that better. from current slide, excellent. Yeah, yeah sorry about you. that. Um, so, what makes this sort of the business unusual? Though it was an initiative piloted by a number of actors, I think the decision to ensure that uh, we look at the current the planning system that we had and see how best we can reform it uh, to ensure it respond to the challenges that we were facing at that particular moment and also going forward. So instead of piloting outside the government, we worked within the government uh, to ensure that we addresses the weaknesses in the planning at both lower level and also at the national level. The other bit is that uh, with the committees I've talked about, the world level committees, these are the, the cornerstone or the pillars of this mechanism, but they're elected by community members and they decide in terms of where to use their resources that have been allocated in a particular year. This one is giving us the opportunity to ensure that whatever is prioritized, whatever is invested in actually respond to the needs of the people, uh, the affected people, most of the marginalized groups that are usually left out in the process bringing on board government agencies, NGOs, both international and local uh, development partners also ensured that uh, we harnessed or harvested or benefited from their different knowledge, resources and capacities that I don't think would have been possible uh, with only maybe only government or only NGOs doing their work uh, separately. And uh, also the fact that uh, we are creating a fund, a mechanism that can pull funding from different sources also help us in ensuring that we have targeted and well-coordinated mechanism going forward. Achievements, so as I've said over 10 years going forward, we have the 15, uh, as at now we have 15 counties that has established the mechanism that consists of those four components. But the beauty of it is that uh, apart from the fact that they're institutionalized, we are seeing the world committees, the communities who are uh, driving this process, engaging in the wider planning and the budgeting process. So they're not only influencing the climate change work, but the broader development work within the county. Of course, we have investment done with the resources that uh, we got from the development partners of the government, uh, ranging from the infrastructure type, we are largely working in arid and semi-arid areas, so most of them are on water, but you also have other ones like community radio for broadcasting climate information and other development information, livestock laboratory for uh, quicker and timely diagnosis of diseases, healthy livestock, we also worked on strengthening those customer institutions that we felt were very critical in ensuring that we manage our resources sustainably going forward. And of course, strategies and plans are also developed. The other key thing is that uh, this was new and therefore uh, documenting for the benefit of those who are coming or getting into the process, we thought also was very critical. So some photos there on your right. Um, uh, one of the important point I want to emphasize on this particular slide is uh, the picture uh, on the right, the, the water point, where you see uh, communities uh, decided to turn a challenge into a solution or to a benefit. This was a big rock which was channeling uh, rainwater into the community land, causing gullies heavy erosion, but they felt that if it was, uh, um, there was uh, an embankment or a barrier created, it could be, the water could be channeled into water tanks that can be used to supply water to homes uh, for different uses. So you see the benefit there. So how are we aligned with the 
the locally led principle. So first it's about uh, devolution, which for us is critical in terms of decisions here are actually being made at that lower level by community representative elected by the communities. Um, and therefore, what we are seeing is that uh, the investment are very uh, relevant, pertinent to their issues. Of course, um, in terms of, uh, we've also tried in the design uh, and also in the legislation is recognized that you need to actually ensure that uh, the marginalized, the minorities are included in the process, otherwise you not hear their voices. Uh, so that has been done, uh, but as you'll appreciate, some of these challenges are uh, deep-seated in society, in our cultures and practices, and therefore it's going to take a long time before they are actually dealt with adequately. So while we are doing that, I think a lot still need to be done. We've had the advantage of uh, working on this, this for uh, some time, also taking time to reflect, distill learning and inform future development. And therefore, I think the beauty is that uh, we now appreciate why it's good to spend some good time uh, and get some funding to continue doing the, the work that you are doing. Additionally, the fact that what's in the kitty for a particular financial year help us in uh, terms of participation, decision making, and therefore they only work with what they think they can do and avoid generating long lists that are never acted upon. The other bit is about, uh, as I said, it's a, it was a consortium brought together. And uh, the key thing is that we are looking at what strength do the different institutions have, how can they support uh, the initiative, and how can this be taken forward. We had uh, agencies concerned with the planning, uh, playing a critical role in terms of how do we reform planning process. We had those dealing with climate information, among others. The other bit is about uncertainty going forward as far as climate change is concerned, and you'd appreciate that. Uh, with the, that challenge, then you need to adopt a staggered or a stepwise process where you can start small, take your lessons, strengthen the institutions based on the need that is realized and then go forward. And therefore that flexibility in programming is required as you respond to these issues. Of course, um, there's the need to ensure that uh, we also have inbuilt uh, accountability mechanisms. For us, election of committee members are transparent. Uh, there are people who have shown good leadership roles in society and therefore very much accountable. How do we ensure that uh, we effectively support um, climate risk management? As I've said, uh, we are using climate information, the different products uh, like seasonal forecast, the weather updates, a couple of years, but our agency, the Meteorological Agency is also working to provide long-term projections to ensure that we inform the, 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 the interventions well. The other thing is that we are also building on the strength and experiences of uh, community or uh, customer institutions so that we harness on their local knowledge, local practices, and also we do things uh, in a better and coordinated manner. Of course, in the process, we have now for embedded tools and a process that, that enable that to happen, that we can harness that uh, community knowledge into the process. Of course, as we, one of the things that we've noted as we work to integrate or make use of climate information is that there's a group, the ultra poor, that are often left out of the process, more so because they don't belong to most of the networks that are being used to disseminate the information. Some of the challenges, as it has not been just uh, uh, smooth running, the one of the challenges that we've uh, actually seen or experienced is that uh, dealing with the political politicians or the leaders, which we have to do, uh, is a challenge in that uh, they would want quick and visible results. So things to do with the uh, uh, hardware, hard infrastructure makes sense to them. But in certain cases, communities have prioritized things to do with uh, strengthening governance, which most people are not sometimes not happy with. So balancing that has been a challenge, but is a journey that we have to work together. Uh, Thank you so course, much, Victor. I'll request you to wrap up now, just so that okay. we don't overrun the, sh the schedule. Thank you. Okay. In terms of, this is my last slide, uh, going forward, I think uh, I said that uh, we are now moving country countrywide, the 47 counties, uh, where this process is now being led by our national treasury with support of development partners, uh, as well as our government here. Uh, the only thing is that uh, for uh, most of them, we'll get both uh, 
uh, readiness, money to prepare the ground, put the, the necessary institutions and uh, mechanisms in place, then invest later. Two counties, uh, the Nairobi and Mombasa, which are largely cities, I uh, think are the only one excluded from the investment grants because there are a lot of other programs going on for investment. Then uh, we see this is part of uh, mobilizing resources through our National Climate Fund and linking it uh, to the County Climate Change Fund going forward. So what Treasury is doing now is to mobilize pool funds together at the national level under the National Climate Fund and then channeling it to the lower level. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Victor. Um, that's a brilliant, brilliant overview of, of another otherwise 10 year um, you know, lessons and programming on uh, County Climate uh, Change Fund. I have a quick follow-up question for you, Victor. Now, at the moment, we are experiencing hunger and starvation in some of these counties that you're talking about in this country, in Kenya. And so the question is, how has CCF been helpful and what lessons can we be able to draw to support communities when really the challenges such as lack of food and hunger and starvation becomes eminent? How can, how can such a fund be able to be useful and move quickly to be able to alleviate such problems uh, in those arid and semi-arid counties as well as the coast? We are seeing news everywhere of people really starving from lack of food. Yeah, I think uh, if you look at uh, the counties that have uh, CCF functional and those without, I think we see them doing better in terms of numbers affected uh, whether it's due to the water for livestock, water for domestic use. So I think, but we are not going to solve every problem uh, in one or two years using the CCF. I think the, the beauty with it is that uh, once we pull this together, together with the other interventions from other arms of government, then we can really deal with the different challenges and hopefully we can ensure that the numbers that are impacted or affected uh, uh, by these uh, events, uh, Cause leading to farmer in ETC can reduce significantly and on a more sustainable basis going forward. So we are dealing with it, but it's something that's going to be gradual, not uh, solving one or two years, but over time with sustained investment. Thank you, 